Hello everyone, Mike Young here with today's Shopsmith. You know, if you've been on uh, YouTube and some of our favorite uh, Shopsmith YouTube channels, you'll see here the last few days been an awful lot of talk about uh, Shopsmith table inserts. And although the information was great and certainly accurate, there was no action. So I'm going to show you how to make that uh, uh, ZCI today. That's a fancy word for a zero clearance insert. I'm just going to show you the way I've been doing it for years and years and years, the type of material I've been using. Uh, it's really pretty simple. Uh, do understand that when you're, when you're using some kind of a, an insert that you made yourself, uh, usually any insert outside of the standard table saw insert, uh, it's a special operation. It's in there just for uh, uh, one little operation for a short period of time. Uh, they don't have to be perfect, but I'll show you how close they can get though uh, right here today. So I start out by uh, taking a trip to uh, my favorite Lowe's. Uh, this material I've always bought at Lowe's. Might be available at Home Depot, I've never really looked. But if you go down the uh, lumber department, uh, usually near the center, there's a special aisle where they have these special pieces, uh, pre-cut pieces. Uh, I'm looking for the poplar. It comes in uh, usually a couple lengths, two foot lengths, four foot lengths. So I'm gonna get a four foot length where is it at here? It's a, say it's quarter inch. Might be just a little bit thinner than that. That was the two foot stuff. Right down here is the four foot. Take a look at this. There's the material right there. $9.42 for a four foot length. That's what we need. I like using the poplar because it's uh, real clear. Uh, usually free of any kind of blemishes, checks and what have you. And I use the uh, four foot length because you're going to be able to get three separate inserts out of that one length. Uh, after uh, my uh, Lowe's discount, because I always use my Lowe's card, uh, this piece was $8.95. Now, if you don't think that's not a good deal, compare going <laughs> to the factory direct and getting uh, uh, the factory inserts. Because we're going to need an a pattern to make our insert out of so obviously your uh, table saw insert becomes your pattern uh, really before I pull this out let me uh, back up here a little bit and reiterate what uh, Scott on my growth dreams was talking about how it is amazing how our engineers even took the time to make our insert so that you can literally fine-tune the flatness of the insert to the table what I've done here is put a little pen light right behind uh, my uh, machinist square and I'm just turning my Allen wrench. Look at that, amazing. So the inserts here are 15 and 7 eighths inches long by exactly three inches wide. So I think I'm gonna start out by just ripping this poplar three inches wide. Then I'm gonna trace out my, my blanks using this as a template. So these dimensions have to be dead on. Anytime I have to have something really, really fine as far as ripping, I'll always set my fence up a little proud and then use one of the less known features of the Shopsmith and that's fine tuning using the quill feed. I can get my Dimension set perfect just by moving that quill locker in place. Something else that I always use on this kind of work is my feather board. Here we go. Pulling that table saw insert, using that as a template to draw out on the poplar we just cut. Line these up perfect and just trace it out. So 
and I'm just going to mark out my lengths on this one. I'll cut these each one separately. And I've just cut all three blanks to the right length. Of course, the inserts are rounded at the front side. Could cut them with the bandsaw and go to the disc sander, but this is quarter inch stuff. I'm just going to go right to the disc sander. It'll make a nice job out of that. That's a pretty good fit. Once we have the three blanks pretty much uh, fitted, that means we got to now drill some holes. I use uh, a half inch Forstner bit as a countersink. Got to clear the size of the head of the cap screw. And then it's a quarter inch Forstner bit to punch through. That'll accept the insert cap screws. So that's what we do next. So I carefully line up where I want my hole with my depth of cut dial. I'm going to set this at an eighth of an inch. Remember, I'm dealing with quarter inch material here. And away we go. Same thing on the other end. So I've changed the bit over to the quarter inch. Now just a matter of punching through. There you have it. Do that on the other two blanks. And we got some inserts. So here's where it gets fun. We're now going to make that the ZCI. Remember that fancy term? Zero clearance insert. So I'm setting the saw back up. Set up here so you can see good. Make sure my table locks square. And what we're going to do we're going to bring the table over and we're going to slowly, with the saw blade running, bring that down till the blade pierces the insert. You're going to do this very slowly. There's our zero clearance insert. So without a doubt, we have a very nice ZCI, zero clearance insert, but whenever possible, you want to use your upper saw guard. So we have to lengthen this right back here to accept the uh, splitter from the upper guard. That's done with the router. So I make sure I'm centered with my router bit just by bringing the, the fence and the uh, blank uh, up against each other and then dropping the router bit down into the uh, one of the holes that I've drilled. I know that's centered. And of course you want to take light passes as always. That's the key. Even though this is just quarter inch, I like nice clean, smooth cut. So uh, take your time here. Make a pass. Take a little bit deeper cut. Make another pass. Make a little bit deeper cut until you get that thing going all the way through. 
you find if you do take your time, you get no tear out at all. Here's the test. Fantastic. Because you may need uh, maybe a drum sanding insert. Pretty similar to uh, making your ZCI, your zero clearance saw insert. I've got a uh, hole saw cutter in here. That'll accept the largest of my drums. I am gonna drill at a bit slower speed. I've got it actually mounted in there. It's a through cut. Again, we just take our time. Just like that. So you can see with really very little effort, you can save yourself an awful lot of money making your own table inserts, okay? These are the kind of projects that you do when you're not working on a major project. There's always a jig or a fixture that'll make the job, your next job quicker and easier and simpler. Uh, if you need specialty inserts, you make those, have them at the ready when you are ready to do that big major project. But again, remember, as we talked about at the very beginning, that $8.95 investment for the poplar, you know, it yielded three inserts. Got a drum sanding insert, zero clearance saw insert, one for whatever I need next, ready to go. That's $90 worth of inserts we did for $8.95. So I brought the machine out of the bright center because I wanted to show you one last thing here. And uh, just a special note here, if you uh, cut these things exactly three inches wide, they'll be nice and snug in here. I mean, you don't have to force them, you just literally press them in place. All right, that's number one. Number two, we'll go back to the very start. We'll use the flashlight and uh, a square trick. Let me bring the camera around here so I can show you something here. And we'll bring this down for you. You can see that light through there right now. I haven't even got the flashlight on it, but let me put the flashlight on it. All right, and remember these are wood. So you're not gonna be able to muscle these down, but you don't have to. You see what just happened there? That light disappeared. A little bit more over here. Isn't that something? Well, that's it for this uh, little episode. Hope you liked this, got a little information out of it. If you did like it, go ahead and uh, subscribe to this channel for more of this kind of information. In the meantime, I'll see you next time on Today's Shopsmith.